listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We are a user-supported website. What does that mean to you? We are not funded by the corporate machine. We will always strive to give you the truth, always give you an opportunity to respond, rebut, contribute. I'd like to ask you all to visit our homepage, uh, see all the things that are there. Your donations not only fund the radio station, but they keep alive the website, which supplies you with archives, a forum, a great library where you can download documents. There's a survival store. Uh, you can learn how to build a tribe, learn how to home can, uh, how to build a bug out bag. There's a survivor blog. There are links to weather, news, space information, government documents, the seismic activity that's going on in the globe, uh, air and water information, uh, news about our Earth in general, whether it be the magnetosphere or the radiation, uh, links all over the place, all over the world, harp information, T-shirts and stuff. Uh, the swag store is a wonderful place just to get a little memento. Uh, make sure that uh, you're with us in the chat rooms as well, and you have your choice of Java or Flash Chat. And be sure to check out the Crow's Nest, uh, where our financial advisor, the Crow, keeps you updated on any financial news that may affect uh, your finances today. Thank you, and make sure you're with us for all the live shows. Check the schedule. There is a link for that as well on the left-hand side of the homepage. And we exist today only because you have done one of the following things. Donated via the PayPal button, mailed a check uh, directly to the station. Maybe you visited the swag and bought a cup or a keychain. Maybe you've told a friend. Maybe you've shared us on your social network. Maybe you've taken a part in our Twitter coaching program. Whatever you've done, we thank you and we ask you to continue to do it. Whatever you may donate today will help keep you voice alive tomorrow. Are they going to be able to get somebody up here? Oh, close, man. We're coming up for you. Well, there's nobody yet, and the floor is completely engulfed. We're on the floor, and we can't breathe. Okay. And it's very, very, very hot. You've got to make it stop, and you've got to indicate to the people who run it, the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. There's a
Good evening. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot, Kevin. I just wanted to talk to you guys this evening about something that's uh, really weighing heavy on me. Hope everybody's doing great tonight. Hope everybody's real comfortable. I've got I've got a fantastic guest tonight, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a bunch of real good callers calling in with a bunch of great questions for him. What I'm going to start off by doing is reading you guys a little bit about my uh, my hometown. A lot of you guys know that I live on the border, and uh, the town that I live in is Del Rio, Texas. And when I've told you guys in the past that I have a pulse in the nation, I really do. And uh, right about now is I'm going to tell you exactly how this goes. This little town that I live in, as many people, many locals will tell you, we've never really had uh, too many problems. Usually you'd see your, your, uh, the, the, the front page of your, of your newspaper would typically read something like this. Is, uh, like this is one of the stories that we have right now. A local school, uh, Dr. Lonnie Green Elementary, has a, a brother and sister. Um, Isabel Gonzalez and Raymond Gonzalez, they're showing off their first place medals. They've each, uh, 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 they've each, uh, they've each competed in, uh, three cross, cross country, uh, events and they've, uh, and they've, they've, they've done real well and they're both, uh, they're both, uh, they're both uh, doing fantastic at, at competing cross country and they've both, uh, all, uh, won first place in every, run, uh, race that they've run. Now the point about this being is is that this is typically what you would see on our front news on the front of our newspaper. I'm going to read you guys a little bit of what's going on here. November 22nd, three Acuna officers murdered. This is the Del Rio News Herald, Piedras Negras, Mexico, Associated Press. Assailants kidnapped and killed three police officers in Mexico City uh, in the Mexican border city of Ciudad Acuna. Authorities said Monday. Now, I can tell you a little bit about what we saw in this case and what we heard about it. These officers were handcuffed, they were shot in the head, and then they were thrown so people in the community could see that there's nobody left to protect them. This was the front page of my newspaper, November 22nd. It goes on to November 23rd. Robbers hit gas station. Not just one, but several. Armed, masked men came across, more than likely, all of them Mexican descent, and uh, they started hitting all the gas stations on the outskirts of town. November 23rd. November the 24th. FBI seeks help in finding bank robbery suspects. They hit a, a bank. Uh, let's see here. The International Bank of Commerce was hit on the 2300 block of, De of Delro Boulevard at 11.42 a.m., which that was an Eagle Pass. Then we also had a, a loan company here, here locally. This place is blown up, guys, to the point that it's uh, pretty much ridiculous and it was absolutely unheard of. Now, what I had told you guys here in the past was that we had a couple of people that, uh, th that I could notice were coming in internationally. I started noticing security companies come in. And if you guys remember back, uh, just not too far back, in 2008, President Bush signed uh, or actually gave the Mexicans $400 million to start combating the war on drugs. Well, before 2008, if you look back historically, this problem wasn't too bad. It was bad, but it hadn't spiked to what we've got now. Now, what you're looking at now is pretty much all-out war. Now, uh, they're having the, the Mexicans are fabricating tanks. Uh, South Americans are fabricating submarines. Now, anybody that's out there with any type of technical uh, uh, any any type of technical ability will, will tell you that it's not easy to fabricate a tank. It's not easy to fabricate a submarine. So there's obviously somebody else helping them down there. And in 2008, when President Bush signed the order to give give the Mexicans 400 million dollars to start combating the drug war, we all of a sudden started seeing people. Uh, we started seeing uh, uh, American contractors in in the United States in Mexico. Uh, instructing Mexicans on torture techniques, Associated Press News. Uh, you can feel free to find Americans actually uh, uh, training Mexicans on torture techniques. And now, today, we're at this. Now, where does this get to? Today, the newspaper headlines read that 10% of all resources returning from Iraq, Humvees, and, uh, and or troops we understand here will be dedicated solely to Del Rio sector alone. So that means that everything that's coming back from Iraq is going to be on our streets real soon. So when I tell you guys that we actually have a real good, uh, a real good pulse in the nation, I do mean that. Now, uh, real quick here, uh, a real quick intro for my guest. Uh, I've got uh, Lucas coming in.
and I'm sure not, lots of you guys know who he is. Uh, he's got a lot of, uh, he's, he's got so much information that he does. He's got a fantastic work. Uh, this guy puts in 17, 18 hours a day. Uh, you'll know him as Lucas 911 or Wayne Young. This guy's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull him in real quick, and I think he should have already called in. I'm going to see if he's online now. Give me one second. Lucas, are you with me? Kevin, has he called in yet by any chance? Uh, sorry, Rick. No, uh, uh, we've had no calls so far. Okay, give me one second. Let me get Lucas on real quick. Uh, Lucas is saying that he called and he got voicemail. Ooh, well, I don't know why. Um, hopefully Nighthawks... Uh and okay, let me get him to try again real quick, or if not, I'll get a number to call him at. And my apologies quickly to everybody. Uh, mayhem wasn't up. My Internet has had big issues. Uh, I've been scrambling around and just got that dealt with just before Rick's show, so I'm not even in the chat right now. I'm trying to get some stuff uploaded to YouTube. Uh, but anyway, it will be back tomorrow night. I'll get that wrapped up tonight, and then we'll start in on it tomorrow. Yeah, give me one second, and I'm getting him to to get with us real quick, and he should be on momentarily. He's trying to call again, I'm pretty sure. And uh, like I said, guys, what I was talking about earlier, while I get Lucas on the phone real quick, and he gets in here. Um, uh, the one thing you want to keep an eye on, and, and if you haven't started to look at now, is uh, start to look at your long-term groceries, start to look at your long-term water supplies, and if you're in a place that doesn't let you catch rainwater and you can't have a garden, then get the hell out of that place now because you got no business there because you can't protect yourself and you can't protect your family. And if you don't have that outlook, then adios. Now give me one real quick second. I should have him coming on. Let me see real quick. Uh, Rick, you do have a caller 512 area code with you now. on the That should be him, all right. Lucas, is that you? Yes, sir. Here we go. How you doing, partner? Is there anything going on right there? Do I still got you? Okay, can you hear me? There you go. Yeah, I got you now, partner. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, let's see if we're going to cut him back in and out. Uh, okay, man, you got the floor. Lay that hammer down. <laughs> All right, well... Uh... Give me a little bit of an intro of what you've been doing, and I, and I know you've been hitting the Internet, man, real hard, and the Internet radio, and, I, and I'm real happy that you're on with me, man, because I saw that you got a, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, I feel real privileged that you're on with me, because, shoot, it seems like you're becoming the next uh, Internet sensation, man, and I'm wondering, are you going to have a, are you going to have a radio show, a TV show, what's in the works, what's cracking, let me know. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on, uh, I'm probably not going to do a radio show, um, it's just, it's too much, um, you have to be there at a certain time, and I'm not always really good with that. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be working on some more documentaries and, and just doing radio shows. I kind of like doing it like this, and, uh, yeah, having a radio show is a big responsibility, and not all, you know, sometimes I like to go away for a week or two at a time, go fishing, who knows, you know, so right. that kind of limits you to the... You gotta, you gotta stick to your thoughts, huh? Make sure you get a, get them all in there, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, there's definitely a lot to all this. It, it takes a lot of work just to make, you know, uh, with the documentaries. I pretty much do everything from, you know, the choreography to the, you know, the editing and producing and the whole kit and caboodle. So that takes a lot of time. Right, right. Now, now, give me, give me a little bit about your first documentary. Tell me a little bit about the first one. Well, the very first one was called The Ultimate Con, which was a 9-11 documentary. I did that for free back in 2007, um, and um, uh, over the years I've had several hundred offers to buy it, but I just keep telling people it's, it's free, and and so I did that, and uh, by 2009 it was the most watched 9-11 video on YouTube of all time, so it's uh, up to 20, almost 26 million views now. Um, so that was the first one. And then uh, I kind of took a break for a while, did some research, uh, started investigating into things, going down different paths and different rabbit trails. And um, uh, then that's when I created The Destroyer Star and the Future of Mankind, which is um, 
basically it started out, uh, I started putting together the pieces of the puzzle. I figured, you know, I wanted to tell my friends, and I couldn't just tell my friends because people look at me like I was crazy. So I figured I'd better put it down in something that's tangible and people can see and get their hands on. And so I created the presentation. I showed my friends. Um, it wasn't more than a couple days later after I showed one of my best friends um, that the Norway spiral happened. And that really freaked all of us out. So I showed the owner of uh, Brave New Books, and he asked me to show it to a couple of his friends. Well, I didn't have any idea that there'd be like 100 people there where I got to show it, and it'd be filmed and put on the Internet. And, and so it kind of took off from there. And uh, that's how they got started. Man, that's that's fantastic. And you know what, man? I actually lived in Kerrville right right around the time I think you were kicking that off. And I just didn't I didn't know if I would have known more about it. I think I would have been up there. You know, they would have had to pull me away. And uh, oh, you, and I'm sorry. Oh, you live in Kerrville? Yeah, I lived in Kerrville for a while. I'm in Del Rio now, but I, I had a, I had to move back to Del Rio after some health issues. But I love Kerrville, yeah. Oh, yeah, I used to work in Kerrville for a couple of years. Um, man, we travel out there from Austin every day. It'd take us two hours to get there and two hours to get home. And, yeah, I used to work out there. Have you ever visited the George H. Have you ever visited the George H. W. Bush Museum in uh, Fredericksburg? Yeah, I sure have. I sure have. Yeah, they got that submarine. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's something to see, man, when you get up there. Fredericksburg is a fantastic place. That submarine is something else, too. That's not exactly something you expect to see up there, you know. Yeah, I mean, they have a submarine that they captured, you know, a week before, um, you know, Pearl Harbor. So, obviously, they knew that Pearl Harbor was going to happen. They captured, like, I think, five or six submarines. Right. And then, and you know, and uh, and then we go back into also uh, the, the dismantling of the radars on that. And uh, and the, I think that was in intentional, wasn't it? Uh, I think it actually had something to do with intentional dismantling of radars and uh, uh, intentional, uh, not not intentional, uh, uh, not intentionally. Uh, they weren't intentionally ignoring them, the radar operators, but I guess that they had had so many false hits or something that they, they were just used to it, and uh, it's just something else, man. I used to sell guns. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look back at a lot of this stuff, you'll find out there's so much conspiracy involved in stuff. In fact, if you look at the circumstances surrounding the Titanic. You know, it's a pretty clear picture that J.P. Morgan built a ship, he called it unsinkable, he invited all his enemies on it, and he killed them all. It was pretty simple. That one I had no idea of, man. I need to look into that, definitely. And if you got something on that, you need to shoot me some of that info over. Now, now, okay, now, after the 9-11 the uh, 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 documentary, which, which one was your next? Uh, it was The Destroyer Star and the Future of Mankind. And so that basically, what I did is I covered... Uh, Ancient societies, the rise and fall of civilizations, um, you know, things going on in current times, science, uh, you know, facts about the sun and the changes to the earth, and, and uh, I pretty much put it all down in a format that's really easy for people to understand and use. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and, and I was, uh, your, 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 la your latest, uh, your latest documentary, you, you said that that's already been shipped out. I guess I, I saw you uh, la last week uh, on the social network. Uh, I guess last week was it last week that you started shipping those out? Yeah, yeah, they they started becoming available on the twenty second, and uh, yeah, there's actually two new documentaries: the Return of the Great Dragon and One Hundred and Eighty Eight Days. So tell me about the Return of the Great Dragon, partner. Well, basically, the Return of the Great Dragon is part two of the Destroyer Star and the Future of Mankind. It's a follow-up. Um, uh, they wanted me to do another presentation down at Brave New Books, and I kept putting it off and putting it off, and finally I agreed to do it on 10 10, 10 and so uh, the place was packed. They actually had to turn away some people because they are beyond capacity, and um, so uh, it's basically a follow-up to the first presentation, I cover, uh, you know, global changes going on, the fact that Earth has been struck by big asteroids that are leaving holes as big as uh, football fields, and they're covering that up, uh, things like that. I go, I rehash a little bit of the first documentary, and uh, that's pretty much what that is. Now, I have a question for you. Um, how far were you able to get into uh, the, the, the spirals over Norway? 
Well, in the first one, I covered it pretty good. Uh, that's that kind of what got me involved in all this stuff was the fact that the ancients drew all those spirals all over the world, and then all of a sudden you see that same exact thing hovering in the air. At the same time, all the world leaders are in Norway, uh, you know, attending a global warming summit, and our president is getting a peace prize for things he has not done yet. And so I thought it was really uh, coincidental that they were all in the area at the same time that that happened. Right, right. Yeah, that's absolutely a coincidence. And and uh, and and uh, and and what do you what 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 do you deduce from that? What do you think it is? Because I've heard anything from uh, from dimensional portals to us slipping into another dimension to to these time rips. I've heard to uh, I've heard time rips from uh, from uh, uh, from CERN. I've heard, uh, uh, you know, I've heard all kinds of jazz. What, what do you, what do you deduce from that? Do you think that the, the ancients probably had a view of what was going to happen, or was it something that they had gone through? Because here, re- here locally where I am, man, uh, I have a. I'm pretty sure you know I have a the the lower Pecos rock art, and, and that swirl pattern is all over. It's everywhere. Anywhere you see well, something like shaman, you know, you see something like that. To be honest, I don't know what it is. I know what it's not, and it's not a Russian rocket. For one, the uh, um, the uh, Russians would have never have launched a rocket over top of the head of a sitting U.S. president, for one, and plus also the other world leaders were there. They would have never launched a rocket over top of a summit like that. You know, it would have caused all kinds of stirs, and people would have been freaking out about it. That's one thing. So you know it's not a Russian rocket. I don't know whether that is an actual event or whether it was something projected up into the sky to to symbolize something. Um, I'm not exactly sure, to be honest, what that was. Um, it probably not to be some sort of time distortion or or something. I don't know. It, yeah, but I'll tell you, the ancients the saw it. Right, right. They had the ancients saw it either with whether it was a through a view of a, of a, whether it would have been a like a a, a psychic a psychic view of something of the future, or it would have been maybe something that they experienced in the past. But it, it is definitely something that they went through and we're experiencing now. Now, do you, I mean, yeah, I think that there was something that they experienced uh, firsthand. I don't think that they had the psychic thing. I think that. Uh, it was something they experienced, and it it was so profound to them that they were inclined to carve it into into granite and and things like that. Um, they just had a inclination to do that. So, hello. Uh, Rick, do we still have you in there? Uh, Seems like uh, maybe we lost connection to Rick. I'm not completely sure. Oh, I can hear you, but I can't hear him. Welcome to the show, Lucas. Thanks for your time. Uh, Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. I try to I try to pull a I try to pull a acid into the conversation, and I shut everything down. Everything turned white on me for some reason. Okay. Oh well, I can go ahead and do that for you, Rick. From here, I'll go Give ahead. Me that. Do that for me, please. And, uh, anyhow, uh, Lucas, are you on? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're, you're, in, uh, you're, uh, you're near the Austin area, huh? No, actually, I live up in, uh, Colorado Springs now. I moved up here about two months ago. Oh, you're in Colorado now? All right. Well, you're in a lot nicer area now. Um, now, now, up there in Colorado, let me, let me tell you, let me ask you something. Are you doing the same thing you were doing here in Austin? Is there a lot of, uh... Are you doing a lot of uh, public appearances and stuff like that, lectures and stuff? No, I've just been mainly working on documentaries and uh, trying to get situated in. You know, it's a little rougher up here because down in Austin, I've got a plethora of friends that I've known for 25 years plus, and here I don't really know any. I've got one friend here, and, and he's got a hurt leg, so I've pretty much been doing everything myself. You know, got to find stuff to move furniture. You know, people to help me move furniture and things. It's been, it's been a little bit of a hassle, but other than that, it's. Uh, I've just been mainly working on documentaries for the most part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. And do you have any anything for the future? You got any ideas for the future? Yeah, I'll be working on another documentary. I don't know exactly what it'll be titled yet, but um, I'll be working on something here in the near future as soon as I can 
brainstorm to get it laid out into a you know coherent pattern, and then I'll be able to put it down in documentary form. But that's what I'll be working on something, something like that. And your 188 uh, days, give me a little a little insight into that. All right. Well, I noticed back on September 11th. Um, or actually, right before September 11th of this year, I was doing some research into the earthquakes, and and I noticed a couple of people had talked about a 188-day pattern, and I was like, well, it's probably just a bunch of malarkey, but we'll see. And I said, well, I looked it up, and I figured the next one would happen on September 15th. So I told my friend and his parents, I said, you know, I found this pattern in the earthquakes. I said the next one's going to happen. Surprisingly, it follows the same line will happen on September 15th, and sure enough, we had a 7.3 in Fiji, plus three other 6.0 earthquakes that day. So at that point, I was kind of uh, convinced that there is something to this 188-day pattern, and I started researching it, and I figured that it, it all makes perfect sense. Um, if there's an object in space, Okay, and basically every time Earth lines up with the sun and the object, it causes an earthquake because there's a tug of war going on between the two. And so what happens is, if this object was, let's take a hypothetical situation, if this object was coming in at an exact 90 degree angle right towards the center of the sun, we would have alignment every 182.5 days because that's half a year. But the object's not coming in towards the center of the sun, it is orbiting the sun. So when we have, like, let's say we have uh, the Chile earthquake, okay, by the time we reach six months later in the, that part of Earth's orbit, we no longer line up with the object because the object has moved in thousands of miles. So you have to add an extra five and a half days each time around in order to catch up with the object moving in. Right. Now, now I have a question. Uh, severity of incidents, because I, I, I followed it, of course, uh, to some degree, and then I absolutely lost count because of all the jazz that went in between the 188 days. But the severity of incidents in the 188 days, has it increased? Yes. The uh, first earthquake that happened in Chile shifted the world's axis a little bit. Then we had the earthquake that happened in Christchurch 188 days later. Then we had the Japan earthquake, which was much more severe than the Chile earthquake, and also shifted the global axis even more than what the Chile earthquake did. So it seems like whenever Earth is in the springtime part of our orbit is when we are closest to the object in the tug of war between Sun and the object, uh, you know, with Earth playing monkey in the middle with the Earth, um, is the greatest. So it looks like come March of this year, I, I'm not one to go into predictions or anything, but I'm just saying that I believe personally there's a greater elevated chance between uh, March 20th and 27th of a major catastrophic earthquake, probably somewhere on the Pacific Plate, maybe Alaska, Washington State, or California. But uh, that's what I kind of believe. Do you think that that's how come, you know, we've been having all the... We've been having all the... Uh all the warnings, you know, the Pacific tsunami warning and the and the warnings for uh, the possible warnings that everybody's been talking about, uh, uh, you know, the, the Canary Islands and all that? Do you think that it's actually going to materialize around that time? Oh, yeah. I mean, the uh, depending on the situation, I think they're just getting prepared. You know, they're getting prepared for them. But, but a lot of that Pacific tsunami warning might have... Uh, might have uh, been circulated around the YU-55 asteroids that slips past us, because when they get that close, they're not sure whether they're going to slip past or not. You know, it's kind of a guessing game once they get in between Earth and the Moon, because they never know what the gravity of Earth and the Moon is going to do to the object, so they might have been preparing just in case that thing hit, and, um, but yeah, they are prepared, and they've, they're doing drills galore, and they've got the... You know, the half a million plastic coffins and all the MREs ready, so they're getting ready. Right, right, right. And, and like I just talked about earlier, uh, uh, maybe uh, the military-industrial complex's uh, idea is to continue down the war war path, and uh, if we can't launch off uh, World War Three, which it looks like we're going to do anyways, we might just use Mexico as another starting ground to bring our tanks down and start to turn them on our people eventually. Now, uh, I've got a caller, uh, Asset, are you around? Yes, sir. 
All right. Uh, say hello to Lucas. Lucas, this is Acid. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Lucas, how you doing? Hey, this is um, Joe Luzano from Facebook. I've been trying to get a um, try to get you on a Freedom Slips for a long time. Glad you glad you can make it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. He's uh he's definitely a, a big fan as we all are, and <clears throat> we're very appreciative to you coming down, Lucas, and taking out taking some time out of those uh, documentaries you're, you're putting together. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Now, uh, any, any any questions, Acid? Uh, not right at this, uh, at this time. I'm oh boy, there's just a lot of questions I can go ahead and ask him, and I just can't think of one. <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. That's how I am. I'm kind of overwhelmed with all the jazz that I got on my mind, and and you know how that goes. It's just exactly. like oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so throw some stuff at us, Lucas. What do you got going? What's on your mind? Well, uh, one one question I'll answer before anybody even asks it or any of the callers ask it. I don't know when all this is going to happen. That seems to be the overall question that everybody asks. Um, you know, I have no idea when the whole kit and caboodle is going to get on the tubes. Um, I suspect it'll be next year sometime, um, but we can never tell. You know, there's so much disinformation out there. It's hard to tell what's real and what's not. But I'm just going by... You know, what's, what's been happening that we know is fact, like, you know, the birds and fish dying and all the, all the earthquakes and sinkholes and that's the other thing too. I think I figured out why we're having all these sinkholes is because of the two axis shifts that happened, the one in Chile and the one in Japan. See, because of the Earth's spins at 1300 miles an hour, the Earth actually bulges at the equator. Um, the centrifugal force of the spin not only bulges the oceans, but it also distorts the entire planet and makes us more oblong shape. Well, if the axis shifts like it did in Japan and Chile, that means that that bulge is also shifting, which means that um, the crust has to readjust itself after axis shifts like that. And in some places, the crust is going to be pulled apart and you're going to have sinkholes there. In other places, the crust is going to be compressed and you're going to have volcanoes. So I think I figured out why we're having all these massive sinkholes everywhere. Oh, now I'm curious. Do you think that that's how come they're actually, uh, like some of them are, or, um, some of them are actually round sinkholes, you know, like the, the, the perfectly round sinkholes uh, in South America and uh, everywhere else? Do you think that that's probably because uh, they're actually, uh, they're, they're, they're magnetic in form, or is it because, you know, maybe... Uh, I mean, just as, as far as the shape, do you, do you got anything to speak to as, as far as the shape of them? Well, I think some of those are old lava tubes, and we might actually be finding old underground bunkers from ancient civilizations thousands of years ago that tried to survive this event 12,000 years ago. They just found all those giant underground bunkers underneath, uh, you know, basically an underground city underneath the country of Tur Turkey. Uh, there's a place out of South America with an underground city that will hold up to 40,000 people. Right. So we might be, some of these sinkholes might be some of them opening up, you know, things like that. Um, you know, it's really hard to tell, but, yeah, there have been a lot of sinkholes, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and and, uh, and and another thing, I've actually heard and I've spoken to people in Mexico that, 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 you know, they don't know the difference. They don't know exactly what they're seeing, but I've spoken to some ranchers that haven't left. You're talking generations from some ranches there. And they're saying, you know, and uh, they're saying, you know, it seems like the mountains are getting closer. It seems like the mountains are getting taller. Someone asked me, look, it looks like the sun isn't setting where it's supposed to. Our plants aren't growing how they're supposed to be growing. Some of them are growing real big. Some of them are dying and withering out. I mean, there's some stuff going on that we've never seen, you know. Now, I'm curious as to, you know, all these, uh, the, the, the swirl patterns in the sky, and now we're starting to see different types of UFOs. Um, uh, and and do you think uh, did, and on the 188 days did you go anything further backwards in time? Did you see anything back back uh, in, in the in history? Um, well, uh, the furthest back I went was the, the Chile earthquake was like the last alignment that I found. So there's been four alignments so far. Um, right. As for um, you know what uh, what I wanted to mention before I forget, if you've got connections in Mexico. If you could get somebody to take a picture of the crater that was left by the asteroid to hit that in Mexico, that would be a big boon for, 
for your radio show because there has yet to be a picture of that taken. But I know there is one because because it knocked down people's doors over a mile away and blew oh, out their windows. The, okay, yeah, yeah, you're talking about the one in, in Tulancingo, right? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, first, yeah, yeah. I have, I actually, I do have connections down there, and I will get us a photograph of that. And I did talk to, I did actually, I heard a, I heard the reports of that, and I heard the people talking about that, and it really surprised me, Lucas, because, I mean, those people were so stunned and so amazed at what they saw and what they heard. And as a matter of fact, when that was going on, it was almost a mirror event because I was watching uh, Mexico's. Uh, Mexico's, uh, oh geez, uh, Mexico's Roswell, which was in Coyame, you know, uh, uh -huh. and, uh, and, uh, and I was watching that right when that incident happened. I, I told my wife, I looked over at her and I said, do you see what's going on? I go, this is almost a mirror event. The Mexicans actually had the same response that's, that's even, that's, that's mentioned here on, in Coyame. You know, they had, uh, they had, uh, Mexicans, uh, military and chemical suits. They all came in. Everybody shut up. Anybody that knew anything is gone. They've been picked up. It's all been shut up. And I, I hear that that, that uh, UFO or whatever it was that hit the ground was taken to Mexico City. And I understand that Raul Julia's son is doing a documentary. And uh, the Mexicans are now saying that within a month or two that they're going to release information that's just going to blow the doors off of everybody. And I think it's uh, Guatemala also and a couple of uh, South American countries are going to jump on board with a disclosure project from Mexico. And I'm pretty sure it's for old Julia's son that's running it. I just, I'd just i have to look because I've seen the mount, mounds of information of all kinds of jazz. But they say that, uh, that their disclosure information is going to come from Mexico's vault. It's going to be pretty much like some of our dis uh, undisclosed information. But they also have a lot of information that will be... Uh, that'll be backing up uh, some of the French the French work that they just uh, disclosed not too long ago. I can't remember the, the French files right now. But anyways, they're supposed to coincide with the French files, and also the Mexican files will go over current events, including what happened in Tulancingo, including uh, photographs of what happened there, and also including what happened in Coyame, and, uh, and the connection between... Oyame and the and the Texas uh, Texas uh, Mexican Chihuahua Desert because uh, we have Marfa lights up there. We've got uh, you've got a military base right by the Marfa lights. And the Marfa lights. I mean, if those aren't UFOs, well, hello. I mean, then somebody can tell me what those are. Then it's not a UFO anymore. Then it'll be an identified flying object. You know. Well, I, so, I uh, think I mean, the I think that the ahead. object that hit Mexico was actually a, a space rock, an asteroid. And also the one that hit Colombia because it left the crater, uh, you know, 100 feet in Mexico. And also at the same time, um, there were a bunch of space rocks that were just missing Earth at the same time. Same thing with the one in Colombia. And also, uh, most likely, my belief is that the San Bruno explosion in California was also an asteroid impact event because there was a fireball spotted in the sky. And also, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of small objects in space just missing Earth that day. And also, there was an earthquake right there at that same place at at zero uh, kilometers. Uh, and also, people witnessed something streaking down from the sky. And yet another thing is a crater looks like an asteroid crater. It's a it's a long trench, and all the debris is blown out to one side. Now, if it would have been a gas explosion, there'd be debris scattered in all different directions, not just on one side. And you know, see, so, I, had my stories, I had the stories, the one, you saw the one in Buenos Aires also, right? right? The one that killed the woman inside of a little, a small a small house and probably injured like six people. Yeah, the yeah, it was in there. California. And so, um, you know, with all that, uh, you know, other than the Eppels realize that in America there are 2.6 million miles of gas lines so that anywhere a, a space rock hits in a, in a populated area is going to cause a gas explosion. Right, a gas explosion or a water main break or something. Something's going to go off, huh? And mm -hmm. we and actually, we, now you start thinking about it, we had a... We had stuff going down in California all around that same time that there was a, a ground shifting and there was stuff hitting the ground that looked that there was like a, a parts of the highway were blown apart and uh, yeah I guess I guess you're right I guess that would cause it and yeah I, I can I can definitely find out and get us some photos about that one in Tulancingo but uh, according to a lot of the stories that I saw a lot of people well the first stories were that the military went down there and disappeared whatever was in there some of the stories that I heard was whatever was in there 
was no longer there when they went to go look for it. So, and, and that was maybe the main story throughout, and I heard that through, through, and you can actually hear that from the people online. A lot of them were saying, whatever was in there is gone now. Now, another one is that, yeah, the space, the space, uh, whether it be uh, whatever it was, the meteors hitting the ground or, or hitting different people, that has happened quite a bit, and that's actually well-known here locally. And uh, there's actually been some people I know of that, that have picked up uh, – space rocks and, and space uh, meteors and they've always been up there also in the same area of Koyame and that so I mean whether this is happening now or not or, or we're going to continue to see more of it I guess we'll definitely check it out I've got Arizona on the line with some questions Arizona yeah I just wanted to uh, reel back a second here and say something to Lucas uh, I kind of had a hypothesis about these uh, Norway spirals uh, you know, back in 1859, they had a solar burst that caused uh, the aurora borealis to go all the way to Hawaii. And uh, we were talking about it one day here, and we came to the conclusion that there was a chance uh, that these spirals are like a, an electromagnetic storm in the atmosphere from the uh, uh, electromagnetic waves around the Earth and uh, maybe because of solar wind or something like that, it caused the electromagnetic uh, uh, particles or something in the upper atmosphere to turn into like a vortex, like a tornado, and that's the reason why they've been seeing them all over the planet is because uh, it's actually like the aurora borealis only formed into a, uh, a, a cyclone and uh, coming down, and because uh, it has all the year markings and colors of uh, being uh, like a vortex uh, aurora borealis. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, I also thought of that, too, and that's another good hypothesis. Another thing I thought about is, I don't know, a lot of people haven't seen this video, but down in Brazil in 2010, an asteroid came in. There, were, uh, there was a guy on a ship. And he was filming, and there were about 15 UFOs hovering in the sky. And an asteroid comes in from the atmosphere. And the, the closest UFO to the asteroid literally chases it down, gets right behind it, and then all of a sudden the asteroid starts to get all wavy, and then it breaks up into a million little pieces. And uh, that's a really amazing video that I saw. And I'm also wondering if maybe this isn't somebody shooting, some of these spirals, uh, just them shooting down incoming objects, you know. I, I don't know. It's really hard. I wish I had access to classified information, but obviously I don't. Yeah. So. Well, it's probably, it's probably a good chance and a good bet that uh, those uh, UFO people have got weapons beyond anybody's wildest imagination because uh, I heard my mom talk about uh, UFOs flying over Mare Island in uh, World War II in uh, Central California there in the Bay Area. And she said whenever the uh, fighter jets went up to attack them that uh, they always made a point of uh, blowing the fighter jets all to pieces and uh, the entire uh, Mare Island base would be showered in pieces of fighter jet as they came down. She said it. Uh, she never really understood why they sent those jets up after those UFOs because they were flying over Mare Island all the time, and every time they'd scramble fighter planes to go up after them, they'd come down in a shower of pieces. So they definitely have got pretty good weapons, and they've had them for a real long time. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I personally think our military's in bed with those people, but, uh, you know, uh, I had a CIA buddy of mine tell me that... Uh, Last week, there was a UFO over uh, uh, the Middle East. Uh, I think it was over Afghanistan or somewhere. And uh, he said that uh, it just came in out of space, out of nowhere. He said it was obviously a mothership of some sort. And it was the biggest thing that uh, anybody that uh, he knew had ever seen. He said it was so big, it, it was uh, uh, easily the size of Texas. He said it hovered over the Middle East for about an hour and then took off back out into space and disappeared just as fast as it showed up. That's a pretty good size UFO being the size of uh, Texas, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And, uh, yeah, there's something to it. Um, the Chinese built a ghost city called Ordos, like no order to call them. Okay, they built a ghost city. It's uh, 500 miles away from the coast. It's 4,600 feet elevation. 
And what's really interesting about Ordos is the fact that they built a scene that you can only see from the sky. Um, it's got a uh, the Earth, the moon, the dark star blocking out the sun, and it's got a giant alien head looking at the whole thing. And you can only see it from like 10,000 foot elevation. And and it's really weird because they, they spent a lot of money on this, this place. Like the Earth, when you look at it from, you know, 100 or 200 feet above the ground, you can't make out that it's the Earth. What they've done is they took taken a stadium and painted some of the seats green and some of the seats blue so that when you get up to about 10,000 feet, it actually makes the Earth with the continent of Asia facing you. So if you look at that through Google, it's in my new documentary, 188 Days. I got the pictures of it and all that. And, uh, and so they're obviously trying to signal something in space. I have a question for you, partner. Was that what they saw that they said was a possibly blue beam on ITN not too long ago? That they were talking about a city being seen that would, that would mysteriously appear through the clouds in, in China? Huh. Um, I'm not sure. House. I just posted it on our on our chat room, and if anybody wants to take a look at that, what they were saying was that there was a, a city that was appearing uh, in the clouds, and they said that it was a hologram, and the, and the Chinese said that uh, it was just the clouds catching it, making it look like that. And I'll tell you what, it, it, it's a city. It's just a city, straight out of city, right in front of the ocean, and it just came out of nowhere. And there's tons yeah, of people yeah, watching Yeah, I see videos on uh, the Internet. Yeah, I saw that video, and it's, it's actually yeah. not in the clouds. It's on top of the river, and what was interesting about it is it can't be a it can't be a reflection. There ain't no way because there's nothing. You can't reflect um, a city like that. There ain't no way that was either a hologram or some kind of thing. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was weird. Do you, do you think it was that that town that you're saying that what was the name of that town again? Ordos. No, it wasn't Ordos. Okay. Well, the, that that city, if you guys recall, that city was at the mouth of a river that leads out into the ocean. And uh, the, the cities that Lucas is talking about are the cities that are high up in the mountains. I mean, uh, you can just about bet that uh, at some point in time there's going to be a tremendous amount of Chinese people head for the mountains, and they're going to need somewhere to live when they get there, and that's what that's all about. Right, exactly. just like the ghost, city, the ghost cities that they already have built. The, the right, right. Well, that's like Russia. They're building underground facilities all over the Euro Mountains, and uh, and they're claiming that their people they'll save eighty percent of the population, and uh, and then we've got the British who are planning to kill eighty percent of the population. So we're going to have to see what happens in this war that's coming because uh, uh, I think there'll be a lot of people will survive and a lot of people will die. I feel sorry for the kids, though, because uh, they're going to get the worst of it. Kids can't handle radiation. No, that's right. Kids, small animals, and then uh, we get to see mm -hmm. the worst brunt of it. And uh, that's actually what we're seeing now is all this radiation. And uh, and then you see people saying, uh, oh, the radiation ain't that bad. It's just going to make us stronger. I can't believe somebody actually said that. Well, because wow, wow. they don't know anything about radiation. Radiation deteriorates the heart muscles of young children uh, it's been proven a thousand times over with tests, and uh, any radiation exposure to children under the age of 10 causes uh, uh, immediate destruction of the heart muscles. The longer they're exposed to it, the more damage is done. As soon as it starts to exceed 25% in damage on the heart muscles, the children start suffering heart attacks long before there's ever any signs of radiation poisoning. And so uh, if there's a war in this country, uh, within the first month, probably 90% of the children in this country will be dead from heart attacks because they won't be able to handle the radiation. Uh, I mean, look at the people that take their young children through these uh, uh, x-ray machines at the uh, airport. That's so insane, it's beyond any, I can't even comprehend how stupid that is. Right, right. That, that's just, I, and, and you know what? And thank goodness that we're all here in a community where most of us, all our eyes are open, or they're recently open, or they've been open for a long time, and, and we're here to, to make a make a make a change, make a change, try to network. And you know what? Some of those people, you guys are right. We're not going to be able to change them. We're not going to be able to save them. And, and and in that case, this is my opinion. The 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 road to hell can be paved 
uh, with good intention because if, if, if you're screaming at somebody, there's a tornado coming, and they want to stay there to take a picture of it, and you want to keep trying to pull them out of the way, well, guess what? At some point, you're going to have to leave them behind. And that's just how it is. You know, and uh, like did I have the, another uh, caller come on? Sounds like the uh, river rescue of the guy that said, no, no, I'm waiting for God to come and save me. And then yeah, after he died, right. he got to heaven, and God said, hey, I sent three boats to rescue you in a helicopter. <laughs> what the hell is your problem? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. so, so do I got another God help, on? Those, God helps those that help themselves. I've always believed that. Well, that's I think right. that's a true story. <laughs> I, I feel exactly the same way, and I say that uh, up to quite a few people. Did, did well, I have another caller join us, Kevin? Uh, no? Rick, uh, Princess, uh, I got a message that she wanted to come in. I tried to pull her in, but somehow that didn't work, so... Uh, okay. I think you know what it is. I think it's because she um, has her Skype turned off. So, Princess, I can see you typing. Turn your Skype to online, and then I'll be able to pull you in. Yeah, I guess uh, I'll take off. Uh, be nice to talk to you again sometime, Lucas. I Arizona, think we have a lot it. to discuss if we ever uh, had a chance to get together. Arizona, there's no reason you have to go anywhere. Feel free to go ahead and drop any questions you got, anything you got on us, man. You got nowhere to go. I got nowhere to go. We got all the time in the world. Bring it on, man. Well, I, I tell you, uh, me and Lucas have a differing opinion on uh, this pole shift thing that's getting ready to happen when uh, Nebaru shows up. Uh, uh, in, in my Bible, it says that uh, uh, there, the world is going to be turned upside down. The Egyptians, mm -hmm. uh, I've heard Lucas quote, Every 3,600 years, disaster. Uh, he left out the fact that the sun came up in the opposite direction after every one of those periods of time. And that's not a 23-degree pole shift. That's a 180-degree pole shift. Right. And, uh, you know, when the sun comes up in the west one day and then it comes up in the east the next day, that's a 180-degree pole shift. The world's actually upside down at that point in time. And uh, as far as uh, as one far day. as your statement about the... Uh, Earth being pulled towards the sun, I think that's an absolute for certainty. We can bet on it because, uh, you know, when this thing rotates around the sun, uh, uh, it's not going to be in the standard orbit. Princess, we have some feedback. Princess, we have some feedback from your, from your radio. My radio is uh, on. Okay, was, wasn't you okay? Go, uh, uh, now, uh, Lucas, do you want to respond to that? Any, any answers? Any, any feelings? Any thoughts? Yeah, well, what I found is that um, whenever this event comes approximately every 3,600 years, it's not always completely horrible. I mean, it's going to be horrible, but it's not like, for instance, it all depends on where Earth is in the orbit around the sun when this object comes up. Sometimes the Earth is on the other side, and the object in the sun, the combined gravity, pulls back towards the sun, which gives us these warm periods that we live in now. And then the other times, every 3,600 years, uh, we get pulled away from the sun just a little bit. And then sometimes, depending on where we're at, it's, it's very hard, like 12,000 years ago. And what I've found is that approximately uh, before the, the big shift that happened 12,000 years ago, that the Earth was actually 2,000 miles um, shifted. Like, for instance, North America was 2,000 miles closer to the North Pole Siberia was 2,000 miles further south, and Antarctica was closer to the equator. So what happened is this object came through. It shifted the, the axis about 2,000 miles. North America was pulled down towards the equator. Thus, the ice cap started melting. Siberia was shifted up into the polar region. Thus, the woolly mammoth froze instantly and died. And then the uh, Antarctic... Uh, which was only half ice covered uh, thousands and thousands of years ago, was shifted into an area where it became fully ice covered. And I think that's why the people, I think that Antarctica was a main hub of what, the, what people call Atlantis, and that um, uh, the reason why they were able to become so technically advanced is, one, they were segregated from the rest of the world, just like the United States is, from Asia and, and Africa and all that. And two, they had massive glaciers on the part of Antarctica because it supplied them with a fresh water, so endless fresh water supply. So it enabled them to become more technically advanced. And then when this, when this thing happened 
12,000 years ago. It shifted to the global axis. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people are arguing back and forth about global warming and ice age and this and that. But the facts show very clearly that we actually started entering into the ice age 3,600 years ago. It takes four um, the four times to get into the bottom of the ice age, about the 3,600 year period. So the, the ocean levels were 17 feet higher, the global temperature was a degree and a half hotter, and the, the Egyptians used a 360 day calendar. So this event happened, it pulled us away from the center a little bit, they had to change their calendar to 365, the temperature dropped, the ocean levels dropped, and that's what we're about to see again. We're about to see phase two of this where we get out another step into the ice age. Yeah, right. well, I, I agree with a lot of that because I'll tell you what, I don't think that we're on the same side of the sun when this thing comes through every time. I think there's times when we're uh, possibly on the other side of the sun, and even though it causes a slight pole shift, it doesn't completely flip us upside down. I think that only happens about every 12,500 years, and the... Uh, and the times that it goes by in between, we're on the other side of the sun, and so the effects are nowhere near as bad. And possibly the pole shift is uh, a lot less. Uh, I know up in uh, Alaska and, and northern areas, they've found all the trees just torn to shreds. The animals are torn to shreds. Everything appears to be just totally uh, uh, destroyed. And uh, that would indicate a major uh, uh, probably pole shift there. Uh, of, the, of the oceans really going wild. And uh, in between that, those times, uh, maybe a minor pole shift, flooding, uh, tsunamis, uh, 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 the North Pole, South Pole winding up in a different spot, not 180 out, but in a different spot. And because uh, uh, I kind of concur with that guy that says that uh, uh, he thinks that the North Pole was up by Wisconsin at one time, and I think that's a pretty good possibility, considering if you look at that country, it looks like there's been uh, ice packs or glaciers or something up there. Right. Well, the ancients, well, real quick, the ancients said, or not said, but the ancients, what you'll notice, and I put this in my uh, 188 Day documentary, is that um, all the sites, whether it be Easter Island, Tiwanaku, Anchor Wat, the Great Pyramids, the Nazca Line, all these sites form a gigantic circle, a perfect circle around the globe. So they actually strategically built these sites in these positions in order to form a perfect circle. And at the very center of the perfect circle is uh, right at the border of Canada and Alaska where they meet the Pacific Ocean. So I think that they were trying to tell us that 12,000 years ago, that's where the pole existed, and that's why they put all those sites in that big circle to show us where the pole used to be. Yeah, that's a real good chance. It's it's kind of like those spirals that everybody drew on the rocks. I think prior to this thing's arrival, they saw a lot of those spirals happening in the sky, and they left tons of messages about this whole thing. Uh, I mean, the ancient Sumerians were virtually the only ones that really uh, uh, got down and carved it into uh, stone uh, in writing where it could be read at a later date. Uh, that we can uh, find. That we can find, sort of right? These that people we that were in, yeah, sort of these people that were in caves that were, uh, you know, I imagine they had to live in the caves for quite a while until the skies cleared up. I don't know what they right. ate, but I'm sure they had plenty of grain. Actually, Arizona, we'll get right back to that, and don't forget that thought. And also, please keep on that thought, Lucas, about what they ate in the caves while they were there. We're going to have a break real quick, and I'll be on in just one minute. And, Kevin, you ready to hit that break? Uh, sorry, Rick. Yeah, I was muted. We'll go to break. Uh, we've got uh, just about four minutes, and then we'll be back live. Get your body upon the gears, upon the wheels, upon the levers. You're tired of sitting in your recliner wondering if the talk radio that you're listening to is actually presenting you with facts or propaganda to manipulate the masses. How do you do this? It's too expensive. I could never get on air. I'm not a DJ. Well, now all that is possible at TotalTruthRadio.com. That's right, for $50 a month. I repeat, just 50 dollars a month you can be the proud owner of your own radio station that is on air 24 hours a day seven days a week 
365 days a year presenting facts that you research, things that you can prove, things that are close to your heart. Stand up against the machine. The more of us that stand up, the more of us that express our voice, the more of us that hear the truth, and that's the goal. We know that there are things going on in this world that, that are just killing the masses. They're, they're dummying down the populations. They're controlling the sheep. And you're tired of it, yet you just sit in your lazy chair and you listen and you listen and you listen and you get more frustrated. And the reason you're frustrated is because you're only listening. Start speaking. Get up out of that easy chair right now. TotalTruthRadio.com is selling affiliate radio stations for as little as 50 dollars a month. That's right, $50 a month. And this just isn't the radio station. It is also the technical support that you need to get the station up and going. You have no computer skills. You don't need it. Go to TotalTruthRadio.com and look for full details. We started with 50 spots available. We are down to 44. These will go quickly. At $50 a month, a one-time fundraiser would pay your cost. So there's no reason to sit there looking at your bank book and saying I can't do this 50 bucks you're on air when you want to be on air you're saying what you want to say you're able to do and present what you see as truth what you see as being important so get up out of that chair right now go to totaltruthradio.com where you're going to find an awesome opportunity and you're going to be able to stand against the machine that is manipulating us all supported guys so please remember that we are here for you so please remember that we are trying to do everything that we can to get you guys going to get you guys informed to keep you ahead of the game and 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 please help us out if you can get an opportunity drop by check out some of the t-shirts check out the stuff that we've got for the for the radio show it's really 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 dynamic stuff and if you get an opportunity you want to talk about something that you really feel strongly about get your own radio show get a hold of station owner nighthawk it's not very hard to do. It's not very hard to get your own station and get your, your word out there. 
Now, we got somebody on the line. Who do we got that's coming up here? Did somebody call Yo. me? Is that Princess, is that you on the line? Yep, yep, Princess here. All hey, right, Lucas. Princess, how you doing? Not bad. All right. Lucas, where are you at there? You still out? You still with us? I'm um, here. All right, Lucas, Princess, Princess Lucas, go for it. Hey, Lucas. Hey, how you doing? Uh, pretty good. We, Yo! We have a host here. His name is Francis, and um, he has a telescope, and he's basically out there looking for stuff all the time. He was wondering if maybe you could drop the uh, coordinates that you have. Um, I used to have them on the document somewhere, but I can't find them right now. Um, if you could drop that down for us so that he can start looking for it. The coordinates for, for what? For um, the planet that you um, have been talking about that is coming in? Oh, no, 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 I don't have any coordinates for any planet coming. For, for one, um, let's get into some detail about this. Um, okay. It's not a planet or a normal star, because obviously amateur astronomers would have found it by now. It's either most likely a brown dwarf star, a neutron star, or a magnetar. Okay, a uh, brown dwarf star is invisible to the human eye. It only puts that infrared light. So you wouldn't see, the only way you'd be able to see it in space is if you saw a black circle blocking out the stars behind it. Because a brown dwarf star will actually absorb light that hits it. It won't reflect, it'll reflect back into your eye, so you can't see it. So you're going to need an infrared telescope to see it for one. Two, it's, um, uh, it's just going to be a big black circle if it's a brown dwarf star. Now, if it's a neutron star, a neutron star is very unique. It's one of the most exotic objects in space. They're only about 15 miles in diameter, but yet they hold the mass of one to two of our suns. So if you had a piece of a, of a neutron star that is as big as a sugar cube, it would weigh over 150 million tons. So you can imagine an object that's only 15 miles in diameter could actually drag Earth around like a like a little kid trying to walk a big old German Shepherd. So um, coordinates, I don't even think that uh, your best amateur astronomers have any coordinates on it. Um, I would say that probably NASA does. But uh, there's been a lot of talk in the direction of the constellation of Leo. A lot of amateur astronomers have been seeing... Uh, Google block out uh, images near um, Sirius. So I think that for the most part, all these things that people are seeing, that they take pictures of and put on YouTube and all that, that, uh, that all these people are seeing are probably just lens flares. You know, 99% of them are lens flares and then the other percentage of them are hoaxes. And uh, I suspect that when it comes up from the south, everybody on the earth will see it at the same time. Okay, that was actually really good information, and I hope somebody's got that down for Francis. Um, the right. thing that you're talking about with the, the sinkholes, um, I'm in Canada, and we had some major sinkholes pop up in um, the soccer field in Quebec, which I'm sure you're probably aware of. And then the uh, liquefaction of the um, railroad tracks up in uh, North Bay area that just, like, totally disintegrated. It was just incredible that somebody got it on video. But that's all on the fault lines of the so-called aftermath of the maps that people have been putting out, like Nostradamus, Edgar Casey, and all of them. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I think that uh, the ancients referred to the sinkholes, like last time this happened, as the pits of hell or the gates of hell, or the, because to them it was the earth opening up and 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 sucking things down into it. So to them it was like the pits of hell, and so that's probably where the myth of hell is underneath the surface of the earth comes from, and it's hot and and lava filled. It's because that's where these sinkholes are leading. So. Yeah, I saw that video up in Canada where the, where the sinkhole opened up next to the railroad tracks. And, yeah, they've been opening up all over the place. There's sinkholes up in my hometown of Pennsylvania all over the place. They've been all throughout Florida. Yeah, we've had a, a, mock, gonna, a major amount of sinkholes. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, somebody, Kevin, was that you trying to talk to me there? 
No, okay. Uh, no. Uh, I think that's just uh, some Skype fluctuations or something, some interference of some sort. Okay, uh, I have a question, uh, uh, Lucas. It says, uh, Dick and John says, do we see any uh, government preparation in, for an abrupt, crime, uh, abrupt climate change? Dick and John, what I see preparation for, I don't know what it is. I see, I see like I told you, at least on the, on, the, on the international front here, I can see uh, 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 soldiers, I can see all kinds of jazz, jazz coming down, but I can't tell you whether it's for the war in Mexico or whether it's going to be for, for climate change or for what. I can't, see, uh, I can't see cold weather gear coming down here, so I don't see where they'd be preparing for that type of a climate change. But then again, you know, I don't see anything like that. Uh, Lucas, any, 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 can you speak to that? Yeah, you nailed it on the head. It's probably for both because I suspect that there'll there'll be a big diversion right before the main event. Uh, it'll either be World War Three or or some sort of nuke going off somewhere, or, or radio, radiological bomb or something, something to take the public's mind off of what's happening and direct it towards you know it's all it's always a sleight of hand. It's always a magician trick. You can always count on. One hand is waving in front of you while the other hand is, you know, poking you in the back of the neck. And so um, I suspect that they'll probably do some sort of diversion. And that's why I'm surprised that people haven't put this all together yet by now. Uh, why, why has terrorism only included the airports? And it's because they're trying to secure the airport. The terrorists could be doing, like a few years ago, uh, there was a major drought in the West, and the terrorists could have been driving around and lighting road flares and chucking them out the windows, and it would have only cost them a couple hundred bucks to cause major millions and millions of dollars in damage, but yet they're not doing these really simple, easy things because it doesn't really exist. They just wanted to secure the airports for when this event happens. They're probably going to do a lottery, just like in that movie Deep Impact, um, and uh, when they're doing the lottery, is when the airports will be used to transport all the children to the Denver uh, airport. That's why the Denver airport can pump a thousand gallons of fuel per minute because they're going to do some sort of mass exodus of the children. You can see it in the murals. The murals don't include any adults. They're all children. They only plan on saving children throughout this and letting the adults basically, uh, you know, meet the. It's going to be like a children of the corn thing, and all the adults are going to be gone. See, and people aren't seeing where that's that's already materializing, Lucas. I'm telling you guys now, when you have no longer, when you when you no longer have police response south of us, uh, when the police no longer respond to your calls, and they're 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 there protecting their family, and they're more concerned with protecting their family, then uh, something's definitely changed, guys. Something's definitely shifted. And when it starts to happen to you guys in your front door, then you're gonna say, wait a minute, I think we better start getting ready. I think we better we better start listening. Now, I'm not talking to the guys that are wide awake and all that. I'm talking to the people that are way asleep that maybe just tuned in for the first time. Uh, you guys really need to need to look at all our regulars uh, on the chat room, uh, listen to the callers, and start to start to get with these like minds and see what you can do to save your families. Because pretty soon I can see where it is going to be every man for himself. We're getting there real quick, so you definitely want to be careful with what you do and which way you go. Uh, do we have, a, did somebody else join us, Kevin? Uh, yes, area code 982. Welcome to Revolution Radio. Thank you so much. Can any of you give me an exact date of when you, you will stop, uh, with the scare monitoring? Well, and I can tell you that you operate a Windows Vista, and that's all the information you get for now, buddy. See you well, later. <laughs> that was just lovely. Um, I think that's one of the yeah. reasons that uh, they've been doing the testing on our children in schools, not just to make sure that everyone's at the same level and who they need to bring up to speed. I think they're trying to find the brightest of the brightest and just see which children excel more than others. Well, here, well let, me respond, let me respond to that, uh, to that caller they called in there. You know, let me ask him, when is he going to take his head out of the hole in the ground? Because the bottom line is, is that all this stuff is happening and you can't deny it. And if you if you're gonna sit around with your head in the hole on the ground, you're gonna get swept away, and that's just the way it is. Yeah. Well, people like that, uh, uh, Lucas, you, you don't even have to worry about because uh, we're definitely all uh, awake. We're all wide awake here, and uh, 
and, and like I said, the, the road to hell is paved with good intention. You give your great information away, and you tell people, buy it, give it to friends so they can know what's going on, spread it around, and if people can't see that and they can't understand that and they just want to uh, throw a, a, a wrench in our, in, our, in, our, in our gears here, then uh, that's not going to work out and it's not going to fly. So we're going to just well, go here's a perfect example. Here's a perfect example. There's two Americans sitting in a concentration camp, and one of them says to the other, hey, I heard we're not going to get fed this week, and the other says, shut up, I'm sick and tired of hearing about your conspiracy theories. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. And, and see, we're hearing, a, we're hearing somebody calling us uh, conspiracy nuts and maybe fear mongers, but they forget that I'm a Texas peace officer, disabled, but my license is still active, and my father worked at the Hutto unit in Texas, and, and his job was almost to be to actually shoot Jesse Ventura and Alex Jones and I was on the phone with him when he actually almost did that so if I want to hear anything about conspiracy theories then uh, you're talking to the wrong guy because I only present conspiracy facts so that's just how that yeah. goes but I mean uh, and yeah. now, uh, now there, there's so many things happening that we have to take care of that if, if we don't take care of each other and, and we let guys like that get over on us then we'll never get anywhere but now, getting back to where we were, Lucas, when you, when you were down in Austin, did you, I'm pretty sure, is it a difference between uh, Texas and, and Colorado and the militarization? Have you seen that? Well, um, where I'm at now, everywhere is pretty much, uh, it's a lot of military around here. It's, there's military bases everywhere. But you don't see any, any soldiers standing around the corner with, uh, you know, M16s or anything. You don't see any tanks or anything like that. It's just a regular area. Um, it's part of the reason why I came here. I'm, one of my best friends lives here. Um, but I feel that if there's a nuclear war between Russia and China and the United States, that they will probably protect, they will probably try and protect this area as, 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 as they can. Hello? Okay, Ad, uh, we have a caller, caller uh, from... That was another one of those um, spoof numbers. That's uh, our friend Joseph Arado. Uh, oh, okay. I just, oh, yeah, that, that's, I'd that, that one. I would recommend him getting a bigger PC screen. It doesn't make sense that he uses such a small screen. But anyway, I'm sorry he interrupted your show. Oh, no, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, as far as for him, uh, I, don't, I don't really deal with anybody. As soon as we have Mr. Uh, Rato's... Uh, you guys give me the ping information, and I don't contact the uh, FBI anymore. I just contact the county sheriff that he's uh, the county that he's in, and and I have real good luck with 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 uh, with deputy sheriffs and sheriffs and contacting them and getting everything I want out of them, and that, and I usually uh, I think you'll see how easy it is to, for me to get through to them. But anyhow, uh, let me see. Uh, we had any any questions? Let me see. Uh, who else is on the air? Princess, anything by any chance? Oh, I've been waiting to talk to Lucas for a while, and I've got, like, a total mind block going on here. <laughs> Isn't that a horrible thing that this would happen to me, too? I'm sitting here. I even had a list of stuff for Lucas to ask Lucas, Lucas all kinds of stuff, and I just stayed frozen. It's like, now we're all starstruck, Lucas. You killed us all, man. You've taken the words out of our mouth. Now where do we go? Well, uh, it's just, you know, we're living in crazy times, and, and there's just so many facets and, and variables to this whole thing. It'd be impossible for any one person to figure it all out. All you could do is take all the, you know, the, the facts that are laid out in front of you and try and put together a bigger, you know, a bigger picture to the whole thing. And it's, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a 10 million piece jigsaw puzzle. And we're only working on the borders yet. We still haven't even gotten to the bigger picture. And I have a feeling that, uh, you know, even the whole thing about the dwarf star and the binary orbit and all that is only part of the level. I think that there is probably some sort of extraterrestrial um, factor. Um, they have uh, been involved in, in uh, manipulating humanity thousands of years ago. Um, an interesting thing is... In the very first page of the Bible, maybe the second page for some people, depends how big your Bible is, but um, it says, God tells Adam, before he even creates Eve, basically God creates the earth and all that, he creates Adam, and then right after he creates Adam, he tells Adam where to find the gold. He tells him to go to the Fishon River, because the gold there is good. Why is God telling Adam to go look for gold when he's the only person on the planet? He's not even wearing any clothes. What's he going to do with gold? You know, what, why would 
what's that all about? You know, and it, it just reassures the whole Sumerian theory of that we were created to mine gold for for some sort of advanced civilization. Right, 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 and and that and and, and as far as that theory, I, I uh, well, I, and, and it makes one think, and and I've I've heard that point brought up several times. We saw we saw the gold disappear off the planet, and now we're seeing some of the some of the major 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 gold holders just dump off all their gold and sell it, and then we have a. Uh, Different places like the University of Texas last year, maybe you saw that, Lucas, they purchased a lot of gold, physical gold, you know. And then uh, we had uh, uh, people on Wall Street, big, big, uh, big uh, trillionaires, billionaires, billionaires rather, uh, selling off all their gold. So there's some kind of giant movement in gold. There's people buying gold uh, uh, anonymously in, in, in large amounts, uh, hundreds of metric tons. And if you think back also, back in World War II, what happened to the steel? Everybody wanted steel. And they had everybody uh, uh, getting everybody steel, just like recently. We had our, our cash for clunkers. What happened with all the metal cars? Now we've got cars that are made out of something that's less than plastic and even inferior plastic. I mean, did, 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 did somebody want all these raw materials? Did somebody want all the metal? Did somebody want all the steel, all of the, all of the gold? Oh, I heard anybody a lot of China. I heard a lot of gold. China. Like out of the uh, the base of the Twin Towers that they actually had trucks lined up and they were shipping the gold out while it was all going on. That was Right, and, yep. and I've heard stuff like that too, and I also heard that during this last uh, little uh, incident when they removed quite a few people from uh, from uh, uh, Manhattan and they evacuated the whole city, uh, the whole town of Manhattan, the city of Manhattan, they said that, that there was also, that might have been kind of a, a diehard type situation where they evacuated all kinds of gold and gold is missing and and then uh we got Hugo Chavez asking for his gold back which I heard he got some of his gold not all of it so I mean maybe the gold is missing maybe it's not around who the heck is going to have it if it's not being in circulation it's not being used to trade that doesn't make any sense you know well it's not like we can walk in and count it that's right it's not like we can actually look at it or anybody can even do anything with it so I mean what, what's the use of it? Where's it at? So, Lucas, what, what do you humans do? What do humans do? We take, yo, we take dogs yo. and we make them do the work for us. That's why they're called working dogs. They pull the sled. They they find people. Dogs do a whole. They guard the house. They do a whole range of tasks that we've not only taught them, but we've also uh, you know yeah. uh, you use their use their. Um, inherent uh, genetics to, to to use them to our advantage. So why wouldn't it be common sense to, if a civilized species wanted to mine something on a planet, they would have a lesser species to do the bidding for them? Right, right. Um, I think that uh, I, I actually, I mean, well, there's been several uh, uh, older people here, locals, you know, locals that you speak to, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Hispanic people, Mexican descent, uh, Hispanic people, Spanish descent, Hispanic people, uh, Native American descent, and they all seem to agree, and they all seem to be very open-minded to the fact that at one time we were being used as, as mules. They actually call us mules. They, they say in Spanish, they say, éramos las mulas, éramos las mulas para los reyes, and what that means is we're the mules for the gods. And, and, and I feel that, and I, and I feel the same way about that. When I heard, uh, when I started listening, and, and when I first uh, was introduced to Zachariah Sitchin's work, uh, I said, wow, that really seems possible. That seems like a real good explanation as for what's going on. And, and then if you, if you really look at it, it sounds, you know, it sounds plausible. And now, now with everything going on, with natural resources disappearing, now we're going after water, you know, well, look at this. Look, guys. We have no more gold. Our gold is probably gone. Our steel is, our good steel is probably gone. Any of our real steel, any of our folded metals, anything that came out of like Japan, uh, uh, the, 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 they're gone. You don't, you don't hear people, there, it's, and I guarantee you can't go to Japan and get a sword made right now. I don't think you're going to find a swordsman right now that can make you a folded sword, uh, a folded steel sword that's going to actually be worth anything out there, or would you even want an irradiated sword anyways? You know, I mean, did they attack yeah. our natural resources, or are they still doing that now, you know? Gold would be a necessity to a civilization that travels through space because it's used in electronic circuitry. And if you're going to be able to 
uh, travel at, at phenomenal speeds throughout space, you're going to need um, circuitry that has the less the least resistance, which is gold, because you're going to need those circuits to be able to transfer that information from one system to the next as fast as possible. Because imagine if you're traveling close to the speed of light, okay, and uh, think about the conundrum here. You have electronic instruments, okay, say you're using uh, copper, Okay, copper has a lot of resistance in it, so it actually slows down the speed of the transmission. So if, if you're traveling close to the speed of light, you may be moving faster than the electronic transmissions in your computers can move. So you're going to need gold to have the fastest possible transmission of electronic data that you can get. Right, right, right. Now, now... Uh no, uh, and 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 that that's not that that sounds absolutely uh, on par with exactly what we're talking about, uh, uh, technically speaking, because we know now that 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 that, uh, that sound well actually communication will more than likely move faster than the speed of light very quick here, if I'm not mistaken, right? And uh, also, uh, if uh, if we're able to do that, I'm also understanding that uh, that that uh, that uh, we're looking for raw materials in Afghanistan. I forgot what was the raw material that we found in Afghanistan was. And going back into uh, raw materials and things that we're losing, I'm curious. Would I mean, we've talked about using hydrogen for fuel. At what point are we going to start to lose all our water, not just because we ran out of it, but because somebody else is deciding to use it maybe for fuel or use it for something else? You know, maybe an extra yeah, there's a, race doesn't drink our water, but they might want it for gas. There's a very good reason, and a lot of people will probably disagree with me on this, but I totally agree with it. There's a very good reason why... Um, unlimited power has been suppressed from the public. And that is, if you take a population map and you put that up against the map of oil discovery, you will notice that the human population went along with a, at a normal rate, and then all of a sudden, in the late 1800s, we discovered oil in Pennsylvania. And pretty much as soon as we discovered a cheap source of energy, the human population graph goes straight. It goes from a... From a um, a vertical line to a complete horizontal line, or a, from a horizontal line to a complete vertical line. So, until humans have figured out a way to regulate their um, breeding so that people with, you know, 75 IQs don't have 11 kids, and people with 130 IQs have one kid. And until we figure out how to do that, free energy will just be the death of us because people just start having babies galore, and next thing you know, we'll have 50 billion people on the planet. Right, and I hadn't even considered that. I hadn't even considered that that possibility. And and, and, would, and, and just per, uh, personally, how do you feel about that? Do you think that we can continue to... I, this is how I feel about it. I feel that, that we can't sustain uh, 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 another couple of million uh mcdonald's eaters another couple of million or a couple of a uh, couple of million uh uh sheeple i don't think that's going to work out for us i think eventually the system will collapse upon itself yeah we've got technically technically advanced children but nobody can weld anymore nobody can swing a hammer anymore nobody knows how to wipe their butt anymore so where will we eventually end up what do you think man do you think that uh lucas do you think that uh it's a good thing that that, that, that Agenda 21 is taking place because there's so many crazy people? I mean, in my opinion, if you're smart enough to fall for it and fall for all the chemicals and you don't take care of yourself, and I'm talking about the radiation, that's a horse of a different color. But I'm talking about the things that they intentionally give us, the, Florida, the fluoride, the, the, the BPA, the, the things that we all know that can kill us, the things that are actually hurting us. Do you think that, you know, I mean, how do you feel about that? I agree, thoroughly. I 100% agree on that, the fact that the powers that be put out two, put out both sides of the, of the knife edge. They, uh, they put out all the Britney Spears and the Lady Gaga malarkey. But then also, again, they're putting out all the ancient aliens and the other things because what I think is happening is they're weeding the, uh, I've looked at this from all angles and what I found is that, uh, it kind of hit me one night. I was sitting out on my porch and I was listening to the cicadas. And there were cicadas everywhere and all the trees, and they were making as much noise as they possibly wanted. And then the next morning I got up, and you don't hear any cicadas, and all you do, you hear the birds, and the birds are out chirping and looking for cicadas. Now, see, they have this perfect little equilibrium going. 
that they've had for millions and millions of years, that the cicadas come out at night and the birds leave them alone. There's no, there's no birds that come out at midnight and hunt cicadas. The cicadas are allowed to go about their life and breed, and, and then the next morning the birds wake up, and it's this little balance that they have. Well, humans don't fit into this balance. We come into an area and we basically do whatever we want and, and bring it to its knees. So I think that um, what's happening is, and this probably happens on every planet in the universe that has an advanced species, is that the top species ends up becoming both the predator and the prey. Because we don't have anything to regulate our numbers. We don't have any species above us that keeps us in line. So we, are the top we end up becoming both the predator and prey, and I think that's what's happening. That's right, until we have that intervention like President Reagan tried to warn us of, huh? Or until we have the, the intervention that, that Reagan tried to warn us of or set us up for Blue Beam or... Who knows how that's going to go? <laughs> Yo! Yeah, what do you think that they're doing with the vaccines that they're, they keep trying to pump out into us? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I can barely hear you, but I heard the word vaccination, so I'll try and go by what you said to what yeah, I heard. She's, she's uh, trying to get from you just exactly what, what, what are they trying to accomplish with all the vaccinations and all that? Well, I think that uh, it's a matter of, you'll notice, the last flu vaccination um, last year, they they pushed it towards the kids. They, they said this particular strain of flu only strikes kids between, you know, is more dangerous to kids between the age of 9 and 16, I think it was. And that makes no sense whatsoever. The flu is more dangerous to babies and, and senior citizens. So I think it's something to have to do with... with um, with what's going to happen. I don't know, to be honest. Um, I know there are a lot of bad side effects. Right, Lucas? I think that's what you're trying to get at. They're, they look more like a target group when they're trying to target a specific age group. Well, make sure you vaccinate this age, because if you don't vaccinate this age group, then they're all going to die, and make sure you get your uh, your vaccination that goes up your nose and this, that, and the other. But I have noticed that. And if you all didn't notice, there was a story that was run on ABC News, and it was about... Uh, this uh, this uh, this Twilight movie or whatever the heck they call it, and uh, there were some people that were having seizures because of a flashing red light during the movie. Well, let me tell you something, guys. They said that it was an, an inadvertently done. Well, if you think that that was inadvertently done with that, and it was an inadvertently done with Nintendo and Atari and every game system that's ever been around, that people were having seizures and people were getting uh. They were getting hypnotized by the lights, and all of our generations was getting uh, hypnotized by the lights. Well, then uh, uh, think about that. I mean, uh, do you guys really think that that, that, that that wasn't not intentional? You know, I mean, well, it had to have been intentional. The video games are definitely a way to get kids um, trained for, for war, uh, for futuristic war, because what they've done is for most the military sponsors a lot of these video games. They've taught the kids how to line up a crosshair onto an object on a computer screen and press a button and kill it. Well, that's what we've basically been doing in Iraq and other places. Um, we line up some crosshairs onto a tank or a group of people and we press a button. And what that does is it takes the human aspect of it. You don't have to, you don't have to run up to somebody and look them in the eye and stab them with a bayonet. It's much easier for a person to, you know, basically just line up some crosshairs and press a button, and and that's what they've been doing is training the children throughout the years how to become very proficient in doing that. Right, and, and, and we really oh. have. Right. Do you guys know that you guys realize that, right? That they actually record what all those kids are doing online, and then they do beta testing for supposedly new games that come out. And only certain individuals are actually invited to do the testing. That's um, right. And, and they're, they're, they, they, they do the same thing with people online. I'll tell you what. I have friends online. They can get online, and they can actually jump online and pick um, pick what they want and uh, uh, pick information that they want at will. My wife can get online and pick whatever information she wants at will. But yet I can get on Google the same search engine or any other search engine, and, and, and I can't find the same information that she's looking up. You want to know what's great? If you open up, uh, it goes deep. If you open up Microsoft Word and you type in, uh, you know how Microsoft Word has not only spelling, uh, 
checker, but it also has grammar checker. Well, if you if you type in something like um, I don't like the all-seeing eye, period, and then hit enter, it will underline all-seeing eye and tell you you have a grammar mistake and wants to make you capitalize all-seeing eye. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. They're, they're so it wants to capitalize it like it's a pronoun. Right. I'm trying to set this up real quick. So I'm having some technical issues. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Princess, anything you got? <laughs> okay, you're out there. Okay. Uh. <laughs> yeah. No, right Princess here. isn't out there. <laughs> just oh, don't get started, Rick. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I, I just I couldn't hear her voice. <laughs> no. Um. Let me see here. Acid, I still got you on the line, also, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything? You, you got anything by any chance? Um. I'm. Well, you're still listening in. I'm still listening in, but um, I do got. Um, I have one question for Lucas, um, which probably he he probably been um, bombarded by the same question over and over again. Is um, are you going to go ahead and update your, your website? Yeah, yeah, I've been. Uh uh, let, let me try to explain why I haven't done anything to that in quite a while. Basically, what happened is um, I decided about a year and a half ago that this all was, you know, 100% real. You know, at first I had suspicions. You know, I'm a person of facts, and I don't believe everything until I see it. But, you know, after about coming up to about 95% sure that this was going down, I got caught in a conundrum of, uh, Austin, Texas is where I lived, and it's my favorite city in the whole world, and I've got a lot of friends there, and have a lot of fun, and roots there, and so I wanted to move up here to Colorado, so one, you know, for a couple of weeks, I'd be like, all right, but, you know, something would happen, and I'd be like, all right, I'm leaving, I'm getting out of here, but then I'd go out and hang out with my friends and stuff, and I'd be like, oh, man, I can't leave Austin, so for, like, about a year and a half, I went back and forth, you know, in this, uh, I guess you could say quagmire, trying to determine whether I was going to move or not. Finally, I just got to the point where, where it was like some days were like, all right, that's it, I'm moving. And then later on in the day, I was like, all right, I can't move. So I decided to flip the coin. I just flipped the coin and I said, if it comes out heads, I'm leaving. But if it comes out tails, I'm staying and getting washed away with everybody else. And so obviously it came out heads and I moved. So I was kind of caught in this uh, quagmire where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. At the same time, I was getting harassed by some people, and and uh, I had some problems with uh, the original people at the website. So now that I've got everything all that past me, I'm able to put more time into all this stuff. Great, great. Yeah, I, I've seen um, you were getting um, personal attacks and everything. I'm, you know, just getting bombarded by uh, by spam and everything. And there was there was times that I said, oh, man. You know, why am I coming here? You know, get all the spam and everything, but it quit after a while. So that's when when I started to return uh, back to your website. Well, basically with the forum, what happened is I tried to upgrade the forum to a new version of PHPDB, and that failed. And something screwed up in the middle of the upgrade process. So now I'm stuck with the older version, and I can't, every time I try and upgrade it, it says it failed. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to implement these spam measures, and I couldn't do it until I upgraded to a new thing. So all that I had to do now is I changed it around so that everybody has to register, and I've got to approve it before they can actually become a member, which cut down on all spam. So that's what the cause of that was. I, I having some sort of upgrade problem, and it's kind of stuck on the PHPB, uh, PHPBB3 when I need to upgrade to a higher version. Hmm. Gotcha. Um, no, I'm... On the twenty second or the twenty first or the twenty second, you were supposed to have a, a documentary coming out on um, Rabbit Hole. Did I misread that? Or... I didn't hear what you said. I thought there was a documentary that you had coming out on Rabbit Hole on the twenty uh, first. Yeah, yeah, it came out. Uh... It was, uh, actually I had two documentaries, The Return of the Great Dragon and 188 Days. They both came out on the 21st of November. Okay, because I can't seem to find them on there. I go up to the home page and then just scroll down just a little bit and it says, uh, there's a little banner there that says, uh, I think it says watch these, um, 
informational DVDs or get these informational DVDs. And that's what, yeah, I need to, I need to get in there and change a bunch of that around. And I do, I do all this stuff myself. Between, you know, 188 days, I filmed, I choreographed, the music was, half of the music was written by me. Um, you know, so I sound scored the whole thing, I edited it, and everything. So I don't really have any help to do any of this stuff. Wow. I'm looking at, uh, I'm trying to get on a trailer here. Um, What's happening here? Yeah, I'm on the main page and I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing your other ones. Okay, if you scroll down, it says, uh, order these informational DVDs. If you click on that banner, it'll take you to the store where I have uh, 188 days and the return of the Great Dragon. Okay, great. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and get that info on there posted also. Uh, now I'm curious, Lucas. Do you think uh, now? Now you said that that you were thinking about uh, about the about the of course the water and everything. Now did that influence your decision on moving up there? Was that one of uh, you know was that really one of the main influences? Uh, do you think that uh, possibly during pole shift it'll uh, the water will come up that high possibly or? Oh yeah, the, 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 naval, the, the naval inundation map. Do you think that that's it accurate? Do you think uh, Edgar Casey's map is accurate, or wh which one do you think? Is a little more accurate. I don't. I don't know about any maps, but what I do know is that where you live right now, if you go outside your house tomorrow morning and you look around on the ground, you'll find shells laying on top of the ground, and those shells are not fossilized, which means that they're only a couple thousand years old. So that tells you that those got washed in there by something. And um, if you look, um, think about this: um, Lake uh, Great Salt Lake in Utah is like 400 miles from the coast or maybe 350, 400 miles from the coast, and that is a saltwater lake, okay, and it has brine shrimp in it that come from the ocean, okay, also Lake Titicaca in Peru, it's up 12,000 feet into the mountains, it's got a whole bunch of, four, it's got 150 miles of 14,000 foot mountains between it and the ocean, but yet Lake Titicaca is a blackish lake, it's got seahorses in it, and there's a civilization, uh, ruins of an ancient civilization at the bottom of Lake Titicaca. Same thing with the Dead Sea over in the Middle East. These are all lakes that were left behind by the big flood last time, and that's why they're salt, and that's why they have sea creatures in them. Right, right, right. Now, um, hmm. Oh, question. This is one that I had. Uh, on Pulse Shift, uh, since we found animals like the frozen, uh, the, the, the woolly mammoths with the frozen food, uh, mouths frozen and their food that they were chewing and, and all this, uh, do you think that, uh, like some people have theorized that, uh, during Pulse Shift will actually flip, uh, uh, will actually be zero G for a little bit? No, I don't think that. See, there's a little bit of an inaccuracy when it comes to that whole woolly mammoth thing. It's not true that they were frozen with grass still in their mouth. It, it's basically that just they were frozen with undigested grass still in their stomachs, which tells you that you know they have a they have you know probably four or five hours it takes for the food to digest in their stomach. So that tells you that they probably were exposed to very cold temperatures. They died of exposure, and then their bodies froze solid before the food had a chance to digest. Right. Yeah, that makes well, sense. There's a question. Yeah, hey, I got one for you guys. Down in southern Arizona, there is western slope gold in the sand down in the deserts down there. They know that it came from the Downeyville area on the western side of the Sierra Nevadas, just south of Lake Tahoe, which means that there was a wave came over that mountain so hard that it picked up tremendous amounts of gold out of the creek beds, washed it over the top of the Sierra Nevadas, and no doubt formed the Great Lake in Salt Lake, washed it down through Nevada, down through Arizona into the southern deserts. Uh, gold is a funny type of a mineral. It can be identified to its exact source location, and that gold that's down in the southern deserts washed almost 800 miles. So that tells you there was some real serious water coming over the Sierra Nevadas to carry large gold nuggets into the southern deserts. And I know they were big because a friend of mine found a two-ounce gold nugget in the ditch on the side of the road while I was with them. And I couldn't believe that it was laying there. And it came from the Downeyville area on the west side of the Sierra Nevada slopes. 
So that means there was a wave that hit those mountains so hard that it washed that gold over the top of the mountains and down into the uh, Nevada, Arizona deserts. And there's a lot of that West Slope gold down there. So a pole shift is a pretty serious thing. That's so exactly the cool. reason. That's exactly the reason why I live at seven thousand feet in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Well, uh, I think yeah, the we're, of the we're talking a we're talking a huge we're talking huge waves. Now, the one that hit Japan was only about forty to uh, sixty feet high, depends on where you were and what the elevation was. But we're talking waves that are probably upwards of five thousand plus feet high that will actually go up into the clouds and push the clouds along in front of them. You won't even be able to see the top of it. It'll be up in the clouds. Oh yeah, well that magazine that I had back in the early sixties said that they expected the tidal waves on the west coast to be at least three miles high. So, you know, I mean that's a lot more than five thousand feet. You got a three mile high wave and I can guarantee you it I mean, that would go inland a long, long ways. I really do think that uh, uh, Edgar Casey's uh, vision of uh, what everything's going to look like when this is over is probably fairly accurate because, uh, uh, I mean, think about it. It would be years before the water washed away. I mean, we've got uh, seashells all along the foothills of the, of the Rocky Mountains here indicating that the entire Midwest was an ocean at one time. I actually know people that have found shark's teeth in Kansas in the creek beds. Yeah, I've, I've, well, found, you know, I've found, uh, heard of that here in Del Rio locally also, shark's teeth and, and different fossilized uh, uh, ocean, ocean jets. Well, the other thing that people need to take into account is that if this object actually pulls Earth away from the sun, that means that it could... The gravitational pull of this object could literally almost cancel out the gravitational pull of the Earth holding us back to the Earth, which means a wave could really reach any conceivable height. Gravity is what keeps waves on the Earth, and if the gravity changes, a wave could reach 10 miles high. I mean, it, it all depends on what, what exactly happens during this event. Not to mention yeah. the effect on the moon. Well, the gravity, uh, I'll tell you what, I really don't think anybody totally understands electromagnetic forces. I mean, look at cold fusion. That's two metals being put together, creating a fusion that's cold that will heat water. Uh, and we could energize the entire planet with uh, something that works and nobody knows why. And uh, I personally think when this thing shows up, that uh, our gravity will temporarily disappear, and we can expect major mental changes in everybody. I know a lot of people laugh when I tell them that they might want to build them a little lead helmet to wear, but, you know, the electromagnetic forces are above and beyond anything anybody understands. I mean, the first time I saw a flash gun, I could not even start to imagine how something that looked like a little flashlight could vaporize flesh. Uh... Right. Something about it, it changes the molecular structure through with a couple of batteries. It changes the molecular structure of, uh, of uh, flesh, uh, 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 whatever it's pointed at that's uh, organic, and it turns it into vapor, and it does it almost instantly. Now, this is an alien uh, weapon that I'm talking about here that our military's had for a long time. I've actually seen one. I know how they work. They're very, very effective. Uh, uh, if the military were to use them against an invading army, uh, they could kiss their ass goodbye because they wouldn't have a chance against something like this. I think, I think and, the, 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 the Germans, didn't they, uh, Arizona, the Germans use it against the Russians, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And another thing, uh, special forces units and uh, anybody that's, uh, that's, that's uh, any special forces unit or a specialized unit, they'll be able to tell you about uh, and you can look it up online. They call it the lightsaber that they use now that, that uh, Arizona's talking about in a smaller version, and they use it to cauterize wounds and, and pretty much just uh, you can oh, heal yeah. a wound. Between that and the skin gun, you can heal a wound almost instantaneously in two, three yeah, days. Yeah, these things are fantastic. Yep. Well, imagine this. Imagine, um, okay, first of all, let's just say the object in space is a neutron star. Well, the neutron star has such an intense magnetic field 
that if it came even within, like, say, 5 million miles of Earth, the gravity from the, the, the electromagnetic gravity and the, the, the field would actually pull the iron right out of your blood, right out of your body, and suck it up into space into it. And so it explains well, exactly... Would, that wouldn't be too bad then, right? Because we really wouldn't feel too much after that. No, you, I'll, I'll you'd have to be... I've got to call You've got to be underground when this thing shows up. If you're not underground, the you know, Lucas is right. This thing is going to do massive amounts of damage when it arrives. I mean, uh, I don't think anybody is really on top of it because we just don't have enough information about what's going to happen. But, you know, it appears by the ancient records the only survivors were the people that were in uh, deep caves. That's right. And well, that, that, another, that, that, another thing is that um, with this... Uh, um, the human body, okay, our, our brains are set on the north and south pole being set where they are. And, and see, the, because you have iron in your blood cells, what happens is every time your blood cells go through your body, once they reach a certain part of your body, they flip north and south, and then once they reach the opposite part of your body, they flip south and north. And most people don't know that. And so... Uh, it explains the power of Babel and why everybody forgot how to speak because when this object passes by, it basically erases their brain, and that's why the CDC is telling people to prepare for a zombie invasion because what, what's going to happen is people on the surface are going to basically have their brains erased all the way back. See, when humans are born, we're born with a, pre, with a set of pre-existing instructions, and that's all we have, and everything after that is learned. And those pre-existing instructions are how to suck a nipple and how to cry when you're hungry, okay? And everything after that is learned. So yeah, imagine if you take... Yes, imagine if you yeah. take everybody back to the instinctual level to where all they have is hunger. Those are zombies. Oh, yeah, yep. they sure are. I think it's we're going to see color. really a lot of that. A I hope all you guys got lots of ammunition. Arizona, well, we, we would actually be monkeys ourselves, so the, air, the, the ammunition in Arizona would be irrelevant to us at that point, and we're still on the surface. Caller 742, what have we got cooking? Arizona, you're a screwball, and Kevin, you're a fucking half nigger motherfucker. That's nice. You. Get him off. Get this guy off. Fuck Kevin, you. we're just going to. Fuck gonna, you, motherfucker. Go Arizona, keep sick of your down. damn bullshit. Fuck you, you All can't right. shut me down, you can't stop me. You can try keep spinning these fucked up stories about nothing that are going nowhere. Are, are you kidding me, seriously, with all this? You talked about Common Element was going to take everybody's memory out of hey, their Kevin, brain. Can we get this oh, guy I, That didn't happen. What happened? That what happened hey. in Arizona? What happened? I thought I thought all our I never would be said anything up. about Ellen and if yes, you, you pay did. attention I never right. said anything about yes, it. You did. Mm -hmm. Caller. Oh, you How did. do we hang up on this caller? You said, somebody you get said him that off, it was gonna you said we wouldn't even remember anything. Yeah, Arizona, know. stop lying, man. Everybody heard hey, you. Partner. You hey, hey, fantastic. Hey, get off story. my show. We're gonna Fuck get you, you off. Nigger. Fuck you, motherfucker. You can't stop me. I will keep calling no matter what. Arizona, stop lying. People have heard you. You said that uh, Elenin was, was Hello, all this bullshit partner. about Elenin. Hello. I was going to I never said anything about Elenin. Hello. Oh, you don't have to respond Jesus to him, Christ. Arizona. All right. Arizona, don't respond all right, to him. So, all right, so, so, oh, oh, all right, Arizona, where is this heavy mass hey, pal, object? And where are just you getting get your information from? It's, it's, it's probably in your kitchen cooking. Oh, Caller 's right you've got to put your body upon the gears upon the wheels upon the levers you're tired of sitting in your recliner wondering if the talk radio that, that you're caller, listening to hey 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 for that caller that just called in I just want to say if brains were dynamite you wouldn't have enough to blow your freaking nose <laughs> yeah that's a that's just a, a troll that we got that uh I guess that uh that just goes to show you guys that freedom slips that uh at RevolutionRadioFreedomSlips.com that we are getting information out there that is absolutely getting the system off of their rocker. They are going crazy to try to shut us down. And these guys keep getting paid to do all those kinds of jazz, and it's very evident that as soon as we hey. get somebody somebody like Lucas in here that has something that's really going to help us out and good information, everybody 
tries to shut them down. You know, Obama I mean? hired 200,000 people to troll the Internet. 200,000 right. people right. got a job to troll the Internet, and that's what they're doing. And they're getting paid $100,000 a year to do it. That's right. That's right. I just so, I mean, wish yeah, I could get a job like that. There yeah, was a, right. But, I mean, there was and all you got to do to qualify is be an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy, he was, he was something else. I, you know, I'd love to debate somebody like that at some point in time, you know, because I, I'm bored of debate. And, uh, you know, people like that are easy to shut down because you start asking them questions they can't answer and they'll switch the subject. You know, he was obviously a moron. Right, he was. And like I said, we'll continue to cook on, and we'll forget about him, and he won't be back on. Now, hey, I, I can like guarantee you, when this, when this star shows up, you're going to see a lot of people like that, only they're not even going to realize that you're not dinner, because they're going to look at you and think you are dinner. Going That's going to be the hard part for a lot of people to take, that their neighbor is looking at them as a turkey dinner. Right, right, right. And, and now, uh, uh, Princess, go, Princess. Yes, there was, a, there was a question in the chat room, and it was up quite a while ago for Lucas. Um, they wanted to basically know your interpretations of the Denver airport murals. <laughs> well, um, one, uh, the one where the, all the nations are bringing the, the swords wrapped in flags to the little German boy is a scene right out of the Bible where the uh, where all the nations turn into weapons and they're beat, they, uh, they beat them from swords into plowshares. Okay, so that is a scene right out of the Bible. Um, it almost seems like it's a celebration of the uh, the survival of the children, where um, basically they plan on rescuing all the children that they possibly can and leaving all the adults behind, and that's pretty much what I gained from that, is it's a celebration of the children surviving. Now here's that's one thing what it for looks you guys. to me like, too. That's right, Arizona. Now, now, here's one thing for you guys. If we're trying to get, if people are trying to shut us down, obviously the information is valuable. And I'll tell you one thing. It can be uh, any number of things that are out there and, and getting ready to slam us. If you're not preparing, then you're not getting anything done then you're not doing anything. Let's say nothing does happen. Let's say there's not a brown dwarf. Let's say there's not a star out there coming to slam us. Would you rather not be prepared in the economic situation and the wars that are going on around the world? I hey, mean, listen, well, the way I look at it, the way I look at it, like that caller that called in, I pray to God he doesn't prepare. I hope that guy does not wake up. I hope he stays where he is. I hope yeah. he stays in the lake right next to the ocean, and I hope everybody like him gets washed away because That's we right. are going to love when those people aren't around after the fact. Oh, yeah, I he's in, the he's in total either. denial. Sure. Show him what I've learned on the Xbox, what we do to zombies. Yeah, that's hey, right. <laughs> if that's you right. guys think this is not a serious threat, let me give you an idea just how really serious the government considers it to be. The U.S. Bureau of Mines has been going all over the United States and Canada and blowing the entrance to every mine in the entire country. I mean every mine, even the ones in the area where I live. They have gone on to private property ordered the miners out of the mine, and then detonated the entrance and, of the mine to shut it down. And the reason they're doing that is so that the people will not be able to get underground. We, Our own federal government and our taxpayer money is being used to ensure the fact that there will be no mines to get in when the time comes. So that tells me we're going to get enough warning to maybe get underground. But, uh, you know, if, if you know there's a mine at anywhere in this country, I suggest you get some shovels and a backhoe and get ready when the time comes. There, there's some natural places, Arizona, that we can look into. We've got two minutes left on the show. I'm going to give them to Lucas. Lucas, I have one question for you. Are you aware of the scientist that had a, that a stroke in, in the South Pole? And they said that uh, they made a real big deal of it. All the major news media was covering it. I'm curious. Do you think this might have been some of that? I don't know. To be honest, uh, I don't have enough information on it to comment. But uh, you never know. And today, you know, you never know what's going on today. Most of the things you see have some sort of alter, you know, alternative uh, actual reasoning behind them. So who knows? Right, 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 right. Um, 
Well, Lucas, uh, the, the, I'll talk to you in just one minute. I'm not going to cut you off, but uh, I'm going to get you my number. We're going to be talking in one minute. I'm about to cut it off, guys. Lucas, I really appreciate you being on the show. If you ever have anything you want to get out there, uh, if you ever want to promote one of your uh, documentaries, please come back and let us know. And please let us know if you've got any information that you've drawn together from all of your documentaries. Once you get all that, I'm sure there's going to be a culmination of events that's going to bring everything together for you, and you're going to be able to help us a lot more. And I really would appreciate it. He came back and gave us some more info, and and I can guarantee you, people like uh, like that last caller won't be on again. And uh, oh, I don't I don't mind that at all, man. I, in fact, I kind of like the spiciness of things like that. So <laughs> let him right. let him call. Right, let him call. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, more things here, uh, Lucas, and I think we're right off the air. Are we are we off now, Kevin? Are we going? Uh, you guys are still live, but we do have to uh, wrap up just to get a uh, little uh, station ID in before the crow comes on with his financial report. But uh, great show, uh, Rick, and uh, to your guest, Lucas. Uh, I've been listening in, uh, trying to get some other stuff done, but very informative. Um, I know it was much appreciated. Yeah, and in, in reference to AA, you know, uh, we need him to keep bouncing in because uh, he doesn't realize how much... Uh, has been accumulated about him, and he doesn't understand how small his fishbowl really is. So enjoy that water while it's still there. Well, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, Kevin. Eventually, his mom's going to quit paying his bills if it's not the government, and they're going to kick him out of the house. You know. But uh, you know, what can you do? Well, uh, every, everybody needs something to do. You know, in between playing video games. I'm sad for him because his computer screen is about as big as my little Skype window right here. Evidently, uh, that was some information that was passed to me earlier. So, like I said, he doesn't really understand what's going on here. Uh, but, uh -huh. folks, we're going to get out of here. Uh, stay tuned. The Crow is up next. He's going to bring us up to date on the uh, financial market, what happened today. Let us know if it got worse, if there's any hope left. And uh, to everybody else, uh, Arizona, always good to hear you. Princess, thanks for coming Kevin, up. Kevin, I'll see you guys later, eh? Right? <laughs> hey, folks. Hey. Thank you, Arizona. Thank you. Hey, you thanks guys all know what a troll looks like now. Get ready to see a lot of them here shortly. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much, Lucas.